Welcome back to 17.5 Nuclear Fission and Fusion. Hopefully you got the 17.4 section of views done. This is the last section of our chapter. Let's jump right in. With an alarming idea. You ready? You are currently being exposed to nuclear radiation. The ground gives radiation. The stars, supernova, pulsars, etc. give us radiation. Even our body gives off radiation. So if you're nearby somebody, you can push them away and say, stop giving me radiation poisoning. But they really aren't. You see, our bodies um, easily repair limited damage. Um, it, it really is not an issue if, if something... Um, damages your body in a very small way, displaces a little bit of DNA. Your body just puts it back together. Um, kind of like if somebody uh, were to be carrying a puzzle and all of a sudden um, one of the pieces breaks off. The body's not going to be upset if a little piece of DNA um, goes goes off and it's it's easily placed back is what I'm trying to say. It's never been any harmful um, effects and so I remember uh, there was a housing community here in Pennsylvania that they built a nuclear testing site behind um, crazy and uh, they had to warn the warn the homeowners uh, that they'd be exposed to slightly higher than normal um, radiation. And of course, the home values went to next to nothing. I mean, you could buy a five-bedroom house for like $20,000. The reality is, is it was completely safe. Um, it was still low-level exposure. There, There's higher exposures naturally occurring in other parts of the world. And um, totally natural stuff. That's not to say I would necessarily buy a home um, in that development, because... No one would buy my house. It'd have no resale value. So, anyways. Um, chemical reactions. Uh, the atomic bomb uh, was released either using an isotope of uranium plutonium. It changed the world by introducing nuclear warfare. It's the first um, uh, nuclear uh, reaction that we really try to develop for the course of war. And it used a chain reaction... It had uranium-235, 236 is unstable, got a neutron, Boom. shot out some uh, neutrons. These neutrons hit other uranium, which hit other uranium, which hit other uranium. Eventually you have this massive explosion, and it's called a chain reaction. And in order for the chain reaction to occur, we have to have a critical mass. So you really have to pack these uh, these bombs in tightly. You can see in this diagram here, um, you need to have the um, the neutrons that go off actually hit something else. If they just bounce around, you're not going to have a chain reaction. Critical mass is a mass required for a chain reaction to be self-sustaining. We can't make a warning bomb. It's not like we can just simply drop, you know, a, a warning bomb off in some country we're at war against just because um, we don't like them. <laughs> so we can say, hey, that'll be you if, if, um, if you don't cool off. Can't do that. We either have to really blow something up or not do anything at all. Uh, the reaction would never take off. We'd actually kind of look foolish if we did so. That's critical mass. Nuclear power accounts for 20% of the electricity in 103 U.S. nuclear power plants, uh, mostly in uh, the east coast of the U.S., some in Illinois. And you can see that there are none near us, so we're relatively um, distant from any nuclear reactor. There's some towards Miami and such. Most of our nuclear power comes from fossil fuel, or sorry, most of our electric power comes from fossil fuels. Yay carbon emission, right? 
Here's how a nuclear reactor works. Natural uranium is harvested. It's enriched to increase the quantity of the isotope. Uh, uranium-235. You need to have about 4% of uranium-235 for it to even work. Um, naturally found in uranium has about 2% uranium-235. So they, they, they mix it up so that a higher concentration of 235 is found. Um, 235 absorbs a neutron, produces, uh, produces more neutrons, initiate chain reaction that's controlled. And um, water is used as a moderator. Sometimes graphite is used, but mostly water. And it slows neutrons down, so uh, things don't get outside of control. So if a, if a chain reaction is happening and, you know, bam, 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 all these, all these um, neutrons are hitting all these uranium at the same time, you're going to have an explosion. We don't want that. We want power. So they use water, and water, um, water will absorb some of the... Um, some of the power that is being produced and slow the neutrons down so they don't explode all the uranium at once. Hot water is boiled, sent through a heat exchanger to produce steam. Steam powers a turbine. The turbines generate electricity. Water graphite is used as a moderator. You can see a diagram on the right inside a nuclear reactor. Very complex. Uh, the coolant carries heat away from the core uh, to make sure that the core doesn't get too hot. And the coolant rods absorb the neutron if the reaction is going too fast. So you can, you can place these uh, control rods inside the reaction to stop it at any point in time. It's very safe. Um, now, when we hear about nuclear reactions... Our mind immediately goes towards destruction. Why does it do that? Because of public scare, really. That's all it is. Nuclear problems and solutions. Started out with Three Mile Island. It's in uh, New York, I believe. Um, you had a core meltdown uh, where the core overheats so badly the fuel melts through the machine. Um, lack of sensors was a problem there. I mean, that was that was 50 years ago, 51 years ago. Um, we've developed a lot of technology since then. 40-year um, safety record um, in the U.S. Uh, since that accident. I think that's a little bit of an old data point that your book uses because it's 2020, not 2009. But anyway, uh, we haven't had an accident since. The big one is Chernobyl. So think about it. Um, now I want to fact check myself. When did the Cold War end? I think it's 1992. So, oh, 1991, I was close. Oh, December 1991. It's basically 1992. Okay, we're good. Um, so anyway, Soviet Union um, is, it is really trying to gather its energy. This is in the Ukraine. Um, and Ukraine is just overworking this poor nuclear reactor. And they, since they're, they're, have communist ideals, they're placing people into jobs. They have no being, no, no job, no, um, no, there's no sense in putting them there, is what I'm trying to say. It would be like, you know, trying to put me to do a, uh, receptionist job. It's like, well, why am I a receptionist? Um, and uh, you doing my job. Well, you don't know about nuclear energy yet, so why would you want to do my job? So anyway, they, they called somebody an engineer, put him in the uh, put him in the engineer's spot. He turned off the uh, coolant. Um, the graphite, which was used as a moderator, caught fire. Poor engineering did the rest. They hastily built the building. Um, Chernobyl caused massive, massive problems. Thousands exposed to radiation died of cancer. Um, many of those who worked in that factory were lost. Uh, not very good. Now, my grandfather was actually an, an engineer, an electrician. He worked at Philadelphia um, Electric, um, a very important um, electric company in Philadelphia. No kidding, right? 
Um, he said that uh, they since he was since he was one of the lead engineers there, um, if there was ever, if there was ever an issue within Philadelphia Electric, um, the engineering room they actually couldn't leave. They they had to do their their job if there was a meltdown or anything. Not very scary, but um, anyway, um, he said that he never felt unsafe. It was everything was done seamlessly, and so. Essentially, Chernobyl was just a uh, kind of a foolish uh, letdown as far as nuclear energy goes. Now, there's been some other nuclear um, issues in nuclear facilities. For instance, in Japan, they had one, and a 9.0 earthquake hit it. <laughs> well, um, some people got exposed to radiation. But a 9.0 earthquake um, randomly occurring very close to a nuclear testing site is no reason not to use nuclear energy. Ever seen something like this statistically? Since nuclear energy hasn't caused any deaths in the U.S. in the past 50 years, it is very much so safer as an alternative to coal, gasoline, natural gas, um, and even hydroelectricity. 5,000 deaths due to one hydroelectric dam. Um, pretty crazy if you think about it. Not to mention that the environment... Um, and I, I'm no radical environmentalist. Um, I think that um, as far as the carbon emissions, you know, carbon, carbon dioxide emissions that we have in our atmosphere, um, the numbers are greatly exaggerated as far as global warming goes. I think, I think carbon emissions does affect um, global warming. Don't, don't misinterpret me. But we get to have a cleaner Earth by using nuclear power. Um, I think it is worth the, the risk CND, and it's probably a uh, mom's group somewhere on Facebook. I don't know. Anyway, there's uh, there's a couple different types of reactors. Um, common one's a breeder reactor. It uses more fuel, or produces more fuel than it uses up. You can um, produce abundant nuclear energy uh, without wasting any. Uh, so there's, there's a couple caveats to that, but uh, for the most part, very, very effective. Uh, nuclear fusion. Haven't done it yet. Um, experiments are being done. It's got the potential to produce so much more energy than nuclear fission. Problem is, um, the reactions aren't currently feasible. Um, so, consider the fact that they have to reach the temperature of about um, a million Kelvin. That's not good. For it, it even work. Now our sun that, that can work very well. Nuclear fusion runs the sun. Um, but let's uh, let's go back to Google, and we'll go to Kelvin to Fahrenheit. So uh, one there you go. One million Kelvin is well some crazy <laughs> crazy um let's see. Uh, 1.7 million degrees, right? Uh, sounds like a sounds like Florida, right? I'm just kidding. Um, so, extreme temperatures. Now we can do it. We've done it before. Hydrogen bomb. We've tested those. Um, it's estimated, I think, that seven hydrogen bombs will destroy the Earth um, if they go off about the same time. These these things are huge. They produce so much energy. It's it's vast beyond our understanding. Um, and nuclear fission um, is possibly the future of energy. Uh, we just we just can't really do it yet. So uh, there are currently engineers and scientists working on this. This is an abundant energy source. As much as we have hydrogen, we could use that to produce energy. And we've got, we've got a lot of hydrogen. So and that's the end of the chapter. Uh, make sure you do 17.5 page... Um, 313 you're gonna have a test pretty soon uh, make sure that you are preparing for that and thinking about that next chapter is organic chemistry so buckle down and really get on to this um, and hopefully you learned a little bit more about nuclear energy how it is very safe very effective um, and does not pollute our, our earth um, as opposed to what CND has told us Anyways, um, it only allows me to record 15 minutes, so I gotta go. I'll see you.